everybody, and welcome to Reptile Dysfunction. My name's Dustin. I'm Ryan. AKA Fuzzy Bottom, and we are here on World Reptile Day. I didn't know it was World Because Reptile every day should be World Reptile Day. Oh, I Am think I right? You should. <laughs> it absolutely you got me should. Right, on that one. right off the bat, I think we need to discuss something that has been. Uh, it's played an important role in my life. You know, sometimes in life we discover words, people tell us things, and it stays with us and changes the very path of our lives. Okay. <laughs> um, and the word of the day is cloaca. Oh, that's cloaca. cloaca. <laughs> Say it with me, Ryan. Cloaca. cloaca. Yes, the cloaca, or the vent, the opening near the tail of some reptiles, all reptiles, amphibians, some mammals. Birds. Birds. The unihole. It's really nature's wonder hole. It's the Swiss army knife of holes. Yes, it is. It's not only used for egg deposition, fornication, but also just to go pee pee. I usually just call it reproduction when it's animals, but fornication, yeah. <laughs> whatever works. It's, it's literally a, a single hole that, that yep. does it all. It does it all. We don't have cloaca. I get jealous sometimes. Why don't I get a cloaca? Because you are placental. Placental. Don't be yeah. dropping those big words on me, Ryan. I don't know what you're talking the about. The mammals you're talking about that have, have cloacas are the monotremes, so like the duckbill, platypus, and the Marsupials, echidna. right? Or some no, marsupials. No, I don't think... I don't I, I'm pretty sure some marsupials have clo cloacas. I haven't looked around that much. No. <laughs> <laughs> but even fish, only certain fish have cloacas. They, they have remnants of a past cloaca, little parts of their You really system. do find the cloaca interesting. <laughs> Ryan, I love the cloaca. I live for the cloaca. I thought I loved food. I love like I love fettuccine alfredo, but I love the cloaca just as much as fettuccine alfredo. And with that, I'm going to move on to the next part of our show, the main event, if you will. I'd like to present to you... The reptile to our dysfunction. <laughs> That's right. We're dysfunction. It's the reptile. Everybody, the three-toed box turtle. Ooh. Now look at this little guy. This is my personal box turtle, and I've always been obsessed with box turtles. This particular one is called a three-toed box turtle, right? Scientific name? Let's oh. do it. Let's attempt it. Terrapine. 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 Yep, Carolina. Uh, Carolina, and I don't know. What's this? Triangulus. Triangulus. Something like that. Sure, we're close enough. Basically means three-clawed. Talking about the name, I, I know something about the terrapine. Do you know where the terrapin came from? <laughs> no, I don't. It's an Algonquin word. What is that? Native Al Americans, the Algonquins. Oh, okay. oh Algonquins, um, yeah. And it means turtle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so turtle, uh, turtle three claw. There we go. Yes, so these guys are okay. from um, basically the south central United States. They're going to be stretching up all the way to Kansas. <gasps> Yep. You're in neck of the woods. Ryan, have you, ever, have you ever encountered a three-toed box turtle? Not many. Uh, no? I lived far enough west that we saw mostly the ornates. Ornates, uh, yes. Uh, ornate box turtles are really cool. Um, these guys uh, live, like I said, and they'll make it down to, to Texas um, and uh, pretty much that whole area there. Um, these guys are found. What do you, what do you... I'm going to grab the turtle. What these, getting ahead of yourselves here. Yeah, I, I just want to see the turtle. You, you keep him. talking. You can hold them though. Hey, <laughs> That's right. Oh, he didn't like that. Um, so, so yeah, they're typically associated with wetlands. They like to be around water. And that's the case for most box turtles. Of course, there are desert box turtles. But then there are also box turtles called the Coelian box turtle from Mexico. Yeah. I got a question. Sure. What makes them a box turtle? Probably uh, their shell, Ryan. <laughs> they're... They're kind of a boxy looking That's shape. That's right. They can completely enclose their body inside of but that shell. More importantly is we have an actual hinge. Yes. That they can, well, he's not going to get mad, but they can close themselves all the way inside that shell. And that's not just a box turtle characteristic. There are, of course, other turtles, um, such as like sp uh, spider tortoises that can close themselves up, um, hingeback tortoises from Africa. Um, so uh, some turtles can actually close up, not just the box turtle. But these guys are famous because they do it better than anybody else. They yes. can actually close their shell to a point where it's said not even a fingernail can fit between that uh, the plastron which is the bottom and the carapace when that closes that hinge nothing's getting through very that. very tight but he's probably not gonna no he's pretty there, you go. there he goes himself away. there you go there, there's also asian box turtles that's the, right the cora genus not related at all not related at all <laughs> uh, they have the same kind of hinge that's perfect we'll have to yeah. get a video of that yeah um you mentioned the ornate box turtle. Yeah. Those guys live in the Great Plains of the United States where bison are uh, um, obviously present. And these guys eat insects that are found in the, their dung. So they're, they're around bison all the time. So that's 
maybe gives us a hint about why they have such strong shells. And uh, they might get trampled on, the strongest might survive, and they go from there. But uh, also, there's a lot of fires that happen in the prairies. These guys are, are pretty fireproof, actually. They found them with huge scarring all over their shell, and they actually can regenerate if it's uh, not so bad. But uh, their shell is literally uh, fireproof uh, to, a, cer to a certain guys. point. They literally have their home in case with them. These guys aren't really one for digging. Box trails aren't known to dig like gopher tortoises and desert tortoises. These guys are mainly going to be on leaf litter, things like that. They will, um, when they're about to bed down for the night, will we'll create what's called a form. And they'll just dig a little area around big enough for their shell to fit in. They'll be a couple inches below the ground, and they'll just sit there with their shell exposed above the ground. A form, it's called. I did not yeah. know that. So every night, I see my box trail find that perfect spot, digs a little hole and just sits there, and then he falls asleep. That shell is really amazing. Um, what, what's interesting about box turtles is that the structure of the shell itself, the, the calcium, everything that combines to make it the strongest shell probably per their size of well, any, any turtle in the world. Something cool with that, that, this is actually with all your turtles, yeah. but you know over the top you've got these things called scoots. Scoots, right, yeah. And that's going to actually be following the vertebra. Yeah. And then you've got the ribs are on the side, but the scoots overlap the ribs they're not on That's the right. same thing so it's kind of like it laminates their shell like shingles almost that reinforces yeah. they're actually fused together unlike a lot of turtles that are just kind of sutured together or something like that so when you see these remnants of this turtle you can actually find them um the whole shell actually formed long past most of the turtles yes that keeps them yeah. C contained, and that's why a lot of even Native Americans would use them um, to uh, celebrate. They would use them as rattles and things like. They were really durable shells, even after long after they were dead. You actually find the uh, the fossils of these guys uh, associated or bones uh, associated a lot with uh, Native American uh, called midden sites. It's a that's fancy, right. Yeah. Fancy term for trash sites. Yeah. They used to eat them a lot, and uh, yeah, it was a common food for these guys for sure. Just then also, as you said, a lot of ceremonial stuff. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. We'll just go briefly into the fossil history on these guys. Yeah. Because turtles are made a lot of bone, they, they really leave along a, a pretty pretty good amount of fossil evidence. Pretty solid. Yeah. And the box turtles in particular just kind of showed up about 15 million years ago, and they were already definitely box turtles. So, so they've been around for quite a while. Yeah, unchanged. They're perfect almost. In particular with this species, and we were talking in Kansas, we also saw the, uh, the ornate box turtle. Right. The oldest really uh, fossils we have of these guys are about five million years ago found in Kansas. Wow. And to kind of put that in perspective because uh, you know a lot of people aren't thinking about five million years ago, that would have been actually a little bit earlier than like the uh, Australopithecus, like Lucy. Mm. So that's back when our own species was hmm. still still pretty undeveloped and we have fossils that you can definitely say, hey that's that's an ornate box turtle or a three-toed wow. box turtle. Wow. Turtles as a whole definitely out age the dinosaurs right yeah or and they're they've been around longer right they've been around longer and pro probably around what 200 some million years um you can see evidence of turtles some of them even had teeth at that point too Correct. you would have had your early dinosaurs then okay if you don't throw the birds in they certainly live longer right so i mean obviously they're doing they're doing something right is what yeah. i'm trying to say they're doing something right yeah, he's trying to flip over. He's confused. Why don't you hold him and oh. maybe you'll calm him down. You're soothing. Oh. Your beard will calm him. Oh, yeah, definitely put him by the mic. Um, <laughs> something to say, buddy? <laughs> Let's uh, do a close-up real quick on that shell again. Let's okay. go back to that shell. So you, you will notice one thing unique about them. You are talking about how the bones are fused, but on top of that bone, there are nerves, so they can feel when you touch them. They can also feel, uh, or I'm sorry, you can also notice that they have rings on those scoots, these areas here. Annuli, uh, right? Annuli, right. So similar to a tree. Um, a lot of turtles, aquatic turtles, will just shed this, this scoot off, just whole thing. That's part of its shedding process. The whole thing comes off. These guys actually build upon their previous um, keratin uh, scoots, basically. So you can actually determine the age of a box turtle up to a certain number of years um, using those, counting those rings. But after a while, they kind of wear off just from wear and tear. Exactly. And it's not... There, it is possible to have rings that aren't that don't match up with the years uh, perfectly, but you can get a rough estimate on and the these age guys of can last for quite a while. Oh yeah, it, up to a hundred years. Who knows? You know, like uh, it's it's one of those animals that typically box turtles you, they say about thirty years, forty years, something like that. Um, but there are reports of them living up to a hundred years. Yeah. What do they eat? 
They're not very picky, Ryan. They're not. They're kind of opportunistic feeders. If they come across a bug, um, if they come across berries, uh, definitely plants, um, anything that moves really catches their eye. Um, they don't have the best senses overall as far as animals goes, um, but they do have a pretty good sense of sight and movement in particular. So if they see something swiggling around, they're going to attack it. Are you on weighted, bated breath here for this joke or whatever? It's, it's something I read when I was looking at what these things okay. eat online. Yeah. And, and bread was listed. And, and I just wonder where... Wheat or... <laughs> and said they eat berries and worms and slugs and, and bread. bread. And they'll go to Panera and they'll get some bread. That's Who doesn't like it bread? It me. I wouldn't put bread down into their... <laughs> that's life. hilarious no mostly um, they have they can see color so anything that's brightly colored usually means it's very nutritious and again worms things that move around usually means it's high in protein they're going to be going after that let's talk about reproduction for a little bit how in particular what makes them special what is it basically a life cycle of one of these animals well in a spring uh, keep it under a, a minute they mate <laughs> they lay eggs yeah the eggs hatch and they yeah. have the fall that's right so <laughs> That's about all you need right there. That's the cliff notes of the turtle life cycle. But they're basically going to be hibernating all the winter, brumating for the winter. They're gonna, their, their most active season is the spring, and that's when you're going to see them looking for those females. Now, they will lay eggs uh, about three to five, typically. And uh, those eggs will take about 70, uh, 70 days or so to incubate. Turtle eggs smell strong. Uh, they have a strong smell. Lots and, of things like to eat them. And mammals and other things will eat them. When they're hatchlings, the shell hasn't ossified you know, so that it really is pretty soft and brittle. There's lots of accounts of even uh, copperheads in that region eating these guys. Um, really, they're pretty much the lowest you can get on the, the totem pole. Uh, and so you really don't see them very much. They don't move around a whole lot. Sadly, you know, people run these over on the road on purpose. What? I, I, there was a thing I saw where they, they put a fake turtle out, and there were people that purposely tried to run over a turtle. It was like a, a target for them. They yeah, were just, okay. awful people. Um, yeah, that's called a monster, is yeah. what that's called. Because these guys literally are one of the most peaceful animals you could ever have. They're not even necessarily territorial with each other. Well, you're, we're talking about how they're such great, sturdy critters, but they're not doing as, as well as they were in a while. They used to be no. a species of least concern. And right. over the last three decades, we've really seen... Uh, pretty remarkable decline on them, and right. uh, it might continue to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, low recruitment, not very many eggs. Those eggs, how many? what percentage survive? We don't know. Um, but road mortality is a big thing, habitat fragmentation, um, just the fact that uh, they do travel around a bit. They want to find that perfect environment for what they need. They have specific humidity requirements. They like to be around water, like I said, um, so that oftentimes uh, brings them at odds with people. The pet trade hasn't been real nice to these no, guys. No, no, and the lax laws in a lot of states means that you can take them all you want. There's some states where it's just just free reign, just take as many as you want. And you can buy a box for what, for about 50 bucks to $100 or something like that, but that's enough that people want to collect them. Um, so yeah. the people that do, they need to be breeding these guys yes. and, and not yeah. taking ones out of the wild. Well, Ryan, I think we're out of time. We're out of time. How time flies with box turtles. I don't know. But thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned next time for another exciting reptile episode from all of us at Reptile Dysfunction. Take care.